Hello and welcome to episode 191 of our SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is May 9th and together with Robert and Goran, we are here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello, everyone. So when running your SAP system on Azure, the Azure Center for SAP Solutions is here to help you create, run and operate it. In previous episodes, we already looked at this in detail and talked about some of the features available with ACSS. While we see the number of customers and registered SAP systems steadily increasing, we are also adding new features to it. To continue with our story from February, where we introduced ACS, I am happy to have Kalyani with us again to show us more features. Kalani, welcome back to our show. Um, before we can get started, can you again quickly introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit what you do at Microsoft and uh, yeah, what, what what is ACSS? Yeah, thank you so much, Holger. Uh, really happy to ha you know be back on the show again and uh, talking to this audience um, about Azure Center for SAP Solutions. Uh, so quickly uh, introducing myself, I'm a product manager for Azure Center for SAP Solutions here in the Azure team at Microsoft. Um, and uh, ACSS is uh, you know, an end-to-end -end experience for customers to deploy, manage, and monitor the SAP workloads on Azure. Um, so I'm, I'm you know, really excited to talk about some of the capabilities that uh, kind of customers can use uh, to run, operate, or manage their SAP systems today. Perfect. Thank you, Kali. And, and um, as you said last time you were here, we, we talked already. We, we took a look already at the ACSS. Um, you, you showed us some of the capabilities, but I think one of the the basic things that we skipped was how to operate, uh, how to start and stop an, an SAP system. Um, and yeah, maybe we, we can take a closer look at this today. Yep. Uh, so we'll get started then. Uh, so let me actually share my screen and get started. Um, There we go. Um, so I think uh, the last time we, uh, you know, we did, uh, you know, come here and speak about ACSS, we talked about the uh, capability to uh, get quality uh, check recommendations um, for SAP systems. So if you have SAP systems running on Azure, register them with ACSS and uh, make sure that you are running your systems uh, with the best of configurations uh, by getting recommendations in case there are drifts found on your systems, right? Um, so that's something that we looked at in the last episode. We'll be linking it here in case you want to go take a look yeah. at that. So today our focus is on, um, you know, the various management capabilities that ACSS offers. And first, we, let's take a look at the uh, start, stop, snooze uh, automation that you can uh, you know, use uh, when you when you register your systems with ACSS or even you know deploy systems uh, using ACSS, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So I have a virtual instance for SAP Solutions resource open here. So this is a system that's already registered uh, with ACSS, and you can see it's all healthy and running. Um, and uh, what you see here is the uh, ability to start and stop a system, right? Um, as a SAP basis admin, you would uh, want to start stop your systems, uh, your application. Uh, quite often uh, in different scenarios. Uh, and uh, instead of going into the virtual machine and you know running those commands there, uh, what, what ACSS offers now is that you can just use this portal experience or even a PowerShell or CLI command uh, to just directly go and start stop the system without getting logging into the VM. Uh, so that's one advantage. Uh, so this start stop capability is not just uh, at the VIS level, which is actually stopping your uh, SAP application or starting your SAP application, but you can also do it at the instance level. So if I go into the central services instance or app server instance, uh, you can you know uh, see that there is a start and stop action here for you to uh, do an instance level start stop. Um, and similarly for the database, uh, you uh, you know right now we support a start and stop for HANA database, so you can select the DB instance here and start and stop that as well. So you have full control of what you want to start stop um, at this point. The actions here, whether at the instance level or on the overview that I just showed you at the VIS level, all of these are starting and stopping just the application or the database, but they are not impacting the underlying virtual machines. OK, mm -hmm. uh, so that's what is this capability from the portal. And like I said, PowerShell, CLI are also uh, API are also options uh, available. So you can build your own automation uh, using the PowerShell CLI commands. Now, uh, with that said, I will, uh, you know, I'll move on and uh, talk about the uh, snooze capability, right? So just, just one second, Kalyani, because I, I, I do want to do a quick step back because I think 
I mean, talking about start stop is is is, is nice, and then okay, it doesn't sound like a, like a big deal, but I actually think what ACSS does here is really pretty amazing because keep in mind we're we're talking about an Azure portal that, that is that is typically just for infrastructure components, so for for your storage, for virtual machines, and stuff like that. And everyone who who, who deals with SAP knows that um, when it comes to starting and stopping an SAP system. There are things, uh, th certain rules that you need to follow. I mean, wh when I was a basis or when I did a lot of basis uh, work, I more than once stumbled across the situation that I had started the application server but forgot to start the database um, be because I was doing this manually or I shut down the database before I shut down the application server or something like that. So these are um, common common things that you, you learn when, when you work with an SAP system. But here the cool thing is that AC says, knows again that this is not a virtual machine. It knows that there is an SAP system running on this virtual machine and it is able to control um, what's actually happening on this. So when, when you click here, I mean, obviously, as you showed, when, when you go in the instance level detail, so if you go on application server, then you can stop the application server. And I guess if you go to the database and would stop the database now, you would be able to stop the database even though the application server is running, I, I assume. Absolutely. But, from the overview point, if you if, if you dare click on stop, then ACSS would take care of first step stopping the application service and then stopping the, the database. And again, this is a very small thing, but it is hugely practical for me because I, I can just now um, click here on stop. And the other thing, which honestly I, I only learned very recently is that all of this is exposed via APIs. So if I have my PowerShell scripts, if where I, I do a lot of other maybe Azure automation, where I do where I already use managed identities to have um, all the authentication um, um, done to to interact with my Azure APIs, um, now I can also use the ACSS APIs to not only control the infrastructure related components, but via the APIs from ACSS, I can now also control start and stop my my SAP systems, and I think. This um, this functionality that I have now, the APIs exposed, is something that is really really cool. And and again, I I have to admit, I only learned about this very recently, um, but but it is fantastic that I have now the capabilities in the portal to click on start stop. But I also can do this via APIs, and and that's really something just just that I wanted to highlight again. So before you absolutely. go to snooze, absolutely, absolutely. Well said, uh, Holger. Yeah, and and that reminds me that I also need to mention the role-based access control uh, that you can uh, you know enforce with these um, start-stop actions here. I know it's very sensitive to start and stop an SAP system. Not mm -hmm. everybody in the company should be able to do it. So um, ACSS provides complete control to the ah, customer great. in terms of who can stop, who cannot stop, who can start, and who cannot start. So there is permissions that are uh, underlying both of these actions and also at the instance level and database level. So you can uh, only give permissions uh, that are ex uh, you know absolutely needed, necessary for the user, and not uh, you know not expose everything to everybody. Great, perfect. Yeah. Okay, yeah. now now let's move on to snoozing. Yes, yes. So I think uh, this is something uh, that I hear from a lot of customers that, you know, they, they do want to save costs on uh, their non-production systems, which don't need to run 24 by 7. And, uh, uh, you know, they basically want to shut down the virtual machine so that they don't have, uh, you know, cost in being incurred unnecessarily, right? So that's one scenario that I constantly hear. And in, in case of uh, virtual machines that run SAP, it's not as simple as just going and shutting down the VM, right? You need to first gracefully stop SAP, stop the database, and then uh, go and uh, stop your virtual machines. And similarly, when you start up, it's it's not an auto start of everything. So you start the VMs and then also explicitly go and start uh, the application or database. So um, ACSS actually simplifies this whole uh, process. You can have an automation uh, set up to start and stop your systems uh, on a schedule. Um, so that's what we'll take a look at now. Uh, not only this, right? Uh, there will be scenarios like patching uh, that I also hear about. So there's a monthly patching, uh, you know, weekend where you need to stop all your SAP systems at scale, complete the patching on the VMs, and then bring them back up. So I, this uh, snooze capability that I'm going to show you can be used both in both for your cost optimization scenario as well as this uh, patching scenario. 
And uh, like we said, there are APIs uh, available, so you can actually plug this, uh, you know, into any of your other automation scenarios that you already have, right? Where you need to automatically start stop a system, just use our API, and uh, that mm -hmm. that just does the job. So, <clears throat> so this is uh, what what I'm showing you here is a solution that's available on the uh, ACSS GitHub repository. Uh, this is also linked from our uh, public documentation. So. Uh, we'll also make sure to drop a link here. Yeah, you can use an ARM template that is available here to actually set up this scheduled start and stop for your systems. So once you uh, select this ARM template, um, I have this open here. So this is uh, what you are uh, going to see where you have to complete a few steps to actually deploy this automation. Uh, so simply uh, create a new resource group or, uh, you know, um, uh, resource group into which you want to deploy these resources. So this is a, a automation that is based on logic apps. So the logic app essentially has a trigger, um, you know, a time trigger of when it should uh, go and execute that stop operation or start operation, right? Uh, stop or start uh, action. So uh, we'll just name the logic app here. Um, so for example, if you want to uh, use this for stopping your stand sandbox systems, uh, on a daily basis, just name your logic app accordingly. So I'm saying SAP SPX stop daily and then uh, use a managed identity. So this managed identity essentially is going to go uh, and execute the whole stop uh, start action for you. Uh, so uh, I'll let me just uh, take the uh, identity here um, and put it. And then also similarly, you need to um, use, uh, you need to have your systems already registered with VIS. So all you need to do is provide the list of VISs uh, or SAP systems that you want to be included uh, in this schedule, right? So if you have, say, 10 sandbox systems, just use uh, the VIS resource IDs for those 10 systems um, here in a com comma separated way. Uh, all of that is in the documentation, so it should not be difficult for you to set this up. And then select the operation. So the SAP okay. operation type should be stop. Um, so uh, mind you that you have to set up two logic apps, one for stopping and one for starting. And then if you have different schedules for different type of systems, just use, uh, you know, use different uh, logic apps for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can also decide whether you want to include a database stop or not in this case, right? So some, there might be some customers that do not want to stop the database. Uh, or if, if you want to start to start stop, you have the flexibility here. The template is providing you the flexibility. Uh, so select accordingly. Uh, and then uh, for the patching scenario that I talked about, you might not want to really stop the VMs. You only want to stop oh, okay. the SAP application, the database, yep. right? So uh, there is flexibility here for you to decide whether you want to stop or not. So this is like a daily, uh, you know, stop of the sandbox system. So I'm going to say stop my uh, virtual machines as well. Mm -hmm. And the other good thing is that if there are systems that are SAP systems that are dependent on each other, uh, the integrated systems, right? You can also decide whether you want systems that are here selected to be stopped in a uh, sequential manner versus concurrent, right? Say if you want a particular system to be stopped first and then the next SAP system should stop, uh, you can just select sequenced and that will stop systems in a sequential manner. Or you can just say concurrent and all the systems are stopped like in one instant. And then there's also option to soft stop uh, you know, systems. So if you have some batch jobs that are running and you want to make sure that they are all complete before the stop uh, action is triggered, you can also provide soft stop timeout seconds here and uh, that boom, makes sure that you, mm -hmm, your mm -hmm. system is not hard stopped abruptly, right? Uh, then comes the schedule. So we have monthly, daily, uh, weekly options available here. So you can just select uh, which day is it applicable uh, for. And uh, so it's, if it's daily, then you select the day and then at what time? Uh, so my bad, sorry. When it's daily, it just is every day. So you don't need to select a day, but if it's weekly, then you select which day of yeah, the week yeah. you want it stopped, right? Uh, and so I want it stopped at 5 p.m., for example. So at five o'clock every day, uh, you can also select the time zone and then that's it. You just go ahead and uh, deploy this logic app. Uh, I have this already deployed here. So if you look at this, it, it there's a logic app. There are some uh, alert rules to m ensure that you are receiving an alert when the uh, system is stopped or started, um, and there is also an action group deployed for you to uh, say whether you want an email notification, you want a ticket to be created in case of failure. So you have uh, all of these um, Azure Native capabilities that, that are being used here. So a logic app, a couple of alert rules, and then one action group. Um, so I'll also show you what's in this, uh, right? If I uh, kind of open the logic app here, 
um, let me quickly open that. Yeah, um, so this is the logic app. If I open this and you can also see the run history here, um, there were a couple of failures. You can go and mm -hmm. actually go into the history and then the beauty of logic app, right? It lets you see wh where the failure is, what the problem is, and then you can take the necessary action. So yeah. Oh, but, um, but that's also actually really cool. So so I, I have full access to the logic apps, which means um, maybe I want to do some additional steps. So so once the, the um, SAP system is stopped, then I could go into the logic app. So just click on edit here. Yeah, and go to the logic designer, logic app yeah. designer. And then I could add additional actions here, or maybe I want to send out an email first, or, or I don't know. So, so I could do this. I could just add additional steps in my logic app flow. And since yes, this is all absolutely. almost low code, um, yeah. it's, it's also fairly easy to do. Yeah. Oh, cool. So yeah, totally flexible solution. So you can go and customize it as you want. Like like you said, right? You can add additional actions or do whatever. And all the parameters that I have input during the uh, you know deployment mm -hmm. of the template, I can go and you know look at them here and make changes as necessary as well. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the parameters here is showing all of these. Uh, you know, include database operations, virtual machine operation. All these are coming up from there. So you can go and make those make changes for that as well. So you have full control over uh, what you deployed um, to this template. And then, oh, that's uh, really yeah, cool. yeah. Sorry, so no, I, I, I just thought this is really cool. So, so we are providing the template um, to get yeah. started, which works out of the box, but yeah. I still have full control. First of all, I see what, what's really happening. If I don't trust you, <laughs> I can take <laughs> a look and see, okay, this is, this is what's actually happening. And then yes. I can still go in and, and do modification enhancements and stuff like that. Cool. Absolutely. And then to show you the alerting here, so the alert rule that was deployed, I, I just opened that here. And so it shows me what, uh, you know, what resources I have and what's the alert set up for. So if I just go into the edit mode to look at what's in place, I can also go and uh, make changes. So these are the two resources uh, that I have uh, alerts configured for because the stop is set up for these resources, which are VISs. Uh, and then if you see the condition here, uh, it says, uh, show me uh, or send me a notification or send me an alert whenever there is success or failure, uh, both. So if you don't need the notification for success, you can always go and just modify this and you know change this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And then it it also the the action group is also linked here. So what is the action that it's going to take when the condition is met is here. And if I show you the action group uh, here, you can go and define uh, whether you want to receive an email notification, whether you want to receive. Uh, you know, a push notification like an SMS or something, or if you want like uh, a ticket to be created through to a service yeah. now, um, you know, uh, instance that you might have. All of these are like Azure services available, so you can just pick it up and uh, configure it the way you want. That's cool. So we are really integrating into the already existing alert framework on 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 the azure side um so yes. if if i have this already set up to do some sms notification or as you said integration in service now um this is most likely already um configured so i can just plug into but and that's really coming back to the to the logic app but theoretically i could also just add an action to logic app that says send me an email and, yes, and i mean this is this is one more action that i would add in logic app um and that's it so so i i, I really like this this flexibility that on the one hand, if, if you have all this set up, if you have already notifications um, set up in, in Azure, then it's perfect. You can easily integrate. But if this is too complicated for you or if, if you don't have this because you have some other tools and infrastructures, then, then you can just modify the Logic App to also interact there. Absolutely. So yeah, it's, it's completely in your control. Um, so that that's the beauty of you know having APIs and you know PowerShell commands and all of that, right? So you can build your own automation the way you want, or you can use what is there out of the box. Cool. Yeah. Um, so that's about start, stop, snooze. I uh, you know urge that everybody just go explore and uh, do reach out to us if you have any feedback. You can always uh, you know uh, log a issue on the GitHub here, or you can also raise a support ticket because ACSS is a uh, generally available service and uh, you can raise support ticket directly from here as well if you have any questions. Um, so with that, I also kind of cover a couple of other capabilities uh, in terms of how you can manage your SAP systems, right? You can um, also configure backup for your entire SAP system from the VIS experience. Um, so every SAP system that you deploy, you want to make sure you have backup configured. 
Um, so Azure Backup provides a virtual machine and uh, uh, HANA database, SQL Server database backup natively. So you can, um, you know, what, what this ACSS VIS experience does is simplifies the whole experience for you to configure backup for your entire system. Um, so you just need to, um, you, in, in just a few, uh, with just a few inputs, you're able to configure backup for all your VMs, your database, uh, and in case of HANA DB, the uh, pre-registration script that is to be run uh, on the virtual machine, on the HANA virtual machine, is also something that ACSS automates. So just with a few inputs about your vault the, into which you want to back up and uh, what policy you want to apply, you will just be able to uh, you know, complete the backup configuration in a few minutes. Uh, so yeah, this is in preview and uh, you know, this is also something that uh, you know, is, is really helpful in mm -hmm, completing mm -hmm. backup in just a few clicks. <clears throat> yeah, nice. Yeah, and then if you've not already used cost analysis, uh, so there is SID level cost view available. So uh, try this out as well. Um, you know, you don't have to go and uh, look at cost, uh, you know, uh, calculating cost of all the resources that make up your SAP system manually anymore. Uh, this is the Azure cost management experience that is integrated. Uh, given that VIS has context of all the VMs, disks, load balancers, of the SAP system, it just aggregates the cost of all of those resources and shows you a cost view at the SID level. So yeah, this is also another um, you know feature that a lot of our customers really love. So if you've not already explored it, I would urge you to go and look at this as well. Yeah, because it for it for you collects all the required um, components or necessary components. Like um, if I have a SID, this is which is high available, um, um, which has a high availability setup. Um, with multiple um, VMs, with multiple application servers running on multiple virtual machines, then this cost analysis would see, okay, all these components belong to this one SAP system and show me um, the costs for, for all these infrastructure related costs. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I nice. think uh, this is what we wanted to cover today in terms of no, so, capabilities. So, so, sounds really, really great. But, but Kalyani, now I have a question because um, we we talked about um, the health check. We talked about monitoring, now registration, um, starting, stopping, backup costs. So, what is your favorite feature of ACSS? Oh my goodness, this is like <laughs> <laughs> a really difficult question. I mean, every single capability is is uh, made, uh, you know, with. Uh, so much love that you know uh, we, we want to make sure that uh, uh, it's really helping customers uh, in their you know different scenarios or use cases that they have right um, yeah so I, I it's really hard to pick this uh, okay. you know, pick pick one Holger <laughs> no no I, I I fully understand you because I was actually thinking um, I mean when you, when you last showed us the health check for example I really love the health tech check because it, it shows you. Um, what is what is happening if there is a drift in 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 the system or something? It, it's really really powerful. But on the other hand, this very very simple easy start and stop functionality, for example, I think this is also so amazing. There there is so a huge potential. Um, the the whole idea of registering an, an existing SAP system is really really cool. Um, yeah, the, the backup functionality. So I I agree with you. It is hard, and it's it's this this whole sum of of functionalities. Um, th that is great, but but I, th I thought I would still ask if you have a favorite <laughs> or um, maybe one last thing. Um, can you? No, I, I guess you you cannot share any upcoming features or something like that. I, I I guess we are right now. I think we are we're really overwhelmed by the, by the number of customers who are using this, and I guess we are getting a lot of feedback additional um or additional feedback from customers. Um, yeah. So so I guess the backlog is is very full with um, new features that hopefully you can talk about in the future to us. Absolutely, I, I'm, I'll be like really happy and excited to come and speak to the audience again once we have something new in the product, yeah. Perfect. Well, Kalyani, um, thank you so much for for stopping by again and, and sharing um, these basic yet really, really cool functionalities. I I, I love the, the the logic app integration, um, the, the APIs. So I'm I'm definitely gonna play around with this again. Thank, thank you. you thank so you much. so much for having me, Holger. Yeah. Thank you, Kalyani. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.